everyone, and today is rendezvous with Pato, Patricio Howard. So I should say benvenido a casa. Ah, gra grazie, grazie mille. Gracias Italian. No, no, gracias Italian. Italian. Muchas, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. ¿Tú ¿Sabes buen español? No. Está poquito? Un poquito. So I want to know how you started, when you started. I want to know about the Formula One and McLaren experience for okay. sure, but we keep that for the end. Okay. So where did you start? So you're from Mexico. So I'm from, born and raised Monterrey, Mexico. Yes. Lived in Monterrey for the first 11 years of my life then I moved to San Antonio Texas which is about three hours from the border which divides Mexico and Texas my parents wanted to give my sister and I a better life because in Mexico it got really bad with the killing and, and it just got really violent they decided to make the move obviously my sister and I were like no all our friends are in Mexico but honestly when you look back at it now it's the best thing that could have ever happened to us because I feel like it allowed it allowed us to grow right it allowed you to grow as a, as an individual for me for racing uh, I feel like I, I grew a lot in certain certain areas and I feel like you can resemble it too as well right you start so young I started karting in when I was six so wow. started in Mexico and then when I started traveling to the US obviously being in the US was a lot easier to do all you that. are you four five years younger than Checo Perez no so I'm 23 Checo is 32 so I'm so you never years younger. you never raised go kart same track not no. in the same category okay no so I'm still a lot younger than Danny Suarez yes okay. but we started at the same tracks we're from the same place so I started karting there and then I, I made the move to cars in around when I was 14. I did it first in Europe. So I did the French F4. Yeah, I knew you came in Europe. And so I, I didn't do the full full championship. I only did a, a few races. And then after that, I came to America because that's where, where I got the best deal in order to race. Did the road to Indy, then ran out of money, got a ride in IMSA. Okay. And then I gathered up some, some money and, and, and got a really good deal with Andretti in Indy Lights. And you were teammate with Colton. Colton, after. yes, teammates with Colton. So we did that in 18 and that kind of gave me the, the stepping stool to IndyCar but then everything fell off from the, the Harding thing and I got signed by Red Bull yes. and then they shipped me off to Japan to do Super Formula but then the FIA didn't want to give me my super license. So that contract that was for Red Bull was actually a Formula One contract. It wasn't for, for Super Formula or F2 or anything and when the FIA didn't give me the super license uh, we were kind of handcuffed and we we're like well they can't use me for what they want me for and i need to go somewhere to make some money so How they, crazy is so it? we kind of just you know split our ways and we ended well together and i called up sack and i said man i'm available he had been kind of scouting me but he hadn't he hadn't proposed anything yep. but then Colin, i said man i'm free i don't know if you still have a spot and he's like let's see and then in a couple of weeks it came together and uh here we are 2020 first year with Indica, them yeah and then 21 first and, win and then yeah texas last year yeah and then uh 22 you're loving it yes i mean yes it's great the atmosphere is so nice huh? the atmosphere it's is so nice and, and i love that i couldn't do that in formula one you know chatting with the drivers and getting you guys to, yeah. to get known it's funny because when you look from outside some people's car you think it you know it was straightforward but then you explain to me who it was and then no it's not straightforward at all no um, it's like here here and then here yeah, and then yeah. here and then here it's just crazy so talking of Formula One. Yeah. How was it? Man, what it's, it's I was more than everything you can imagine. I right? was mind blown with what the car is capable of. They say, yeah, they're so quick and they do this and that, but when you're in the car and you're approaching the corner, there's, there's no way this car is gonna stop. There is no way this car is gonna be flat. And it is. It's just like Oh yeah. my god. You turn and your head to turn two seconds the, later. One of the best experiences I've ever had in a race car was obviously that car. But you know in Abu Dhabi, turn one yeah. and then two and three. Yeah. The change of direction from two and three, man, my smile inside the helmet. And I still get goosebumps when yeah. I think about it because the first lap I said, don't be a wussy, go flat. And I did the out lap install and then uh, out prep and then push. And my first flight I said, let's do it. Which I'm, I know it's easy flat through there, but it's so but fast, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. From, from any other car that I've been to, it's like, no, you probably a it's little like bit in the first. Yeah, exactly. Indy, you know, they tell you it's flat to the four corners. Exactly. It takes a few yeah. to get there. And I did it in the change, of, like the car just boom, boom. And I was like, oh my God. And then I was mind blown with how little pressure you need to apply to the brake. Really? For the car to just boom. A different brake system from the one I ran. You think? Yeah. Like man, cause in the Indy car, Man, I destroyed a set of tires because I was used to the pressures here and I just slammed the brakes, destroyed the tire. Okay. You're applying double, more than double the pressure than what was ideal from Lando and Daniels. And I was like, like what? 
So I, so that was hard to kind of comprehend where you just, you, you give it a nice smack, but it's not like as hard as you no, can. No. And the thing stops like, yeah. Unbelievable. 6G, 6.5 oh, so cool. Uh, but at the end of the day, mate, I, I would go to the... Like, you need to break here. Yes, I know, but I can't see. Okay, yeah. Like, I can't see. I don't know where I'm going. Can you put something on the map? Yeah. Like, can you, you put, so like, a hole yeah. here? It's, it's, it's the first day in a Formula 1 car. It is the day that you've been waiting for your life. It's and amazing. you prepare as much as you can your neck. You know it's going to be hard. And it's so annoying when you get to a point where your neck just... You can't, can't do it anymore. And it happened to you also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. But then, in the, then the more you drive it, it just gets used to it. You just get, yes. I mean, in winter, you're still going back to winter test, yes. But you normally do 120, 140 laps in Barcelona the yeah. first day. So it's just like a wake up. But then in the season, it's yeah. it's kind of easy like oh, in the But it's car. amazing. The yeah. ride is so nice. The power delivery, the gearbox. Like yeah, the gearbox for me is one of the huge differences in the car. If you don't know you've shifted and there's no sound, you don't know you've shifted. Yeah. The speed just doesn't never slow down. It's all, oh, man. Oh. And I um, mean the environment and everything. It's very different. I mean, yeah. it's it's beautiful, but it's also almost too sometimes too perfect. It's very, it's it's very, it's like I feel like it's the textbook definition of image. Like you arrive and it's like, wow. Like cars aren't even rolling on the track, and every the infrastructure of what F1 everything. is is like, wow, crazy. That one, and uh, I got to drive Mika's car in Laguna. Oh yeah, so the footage. I was so oh. jealous. I have to say, in how the the engine pulled in the straight. Yeah. It's also the car was 750 kilos. Even lighter than that. Yeah, Formula No is 750. When I started, it was 605 kilos. So that oh, was sorry, 550. no, 550 kilos. Yes. Sorry, sorry, yes, yeah. 550 kilos. Yeah, but that was a V10 as well. Mate, car. Yeah. the way that the engine pulled. Oh. <laughs> And I was in fifth gear and it still It never stops. Oh no. Oh man. Like amazing. 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 And I was mind blown with how much of a difference it was from the IndyCar because the horsepower is the same, but it weighs half of the, the weight. And it was like, wow. And oh, the engine noise. Oh. I know. I, I miss those days. <laughs> Me I mean, you, you you got to do some good years with the V8 I did, at least. I did the V8, yes. I never drove a V10. But it was beautiful, the V8 also. It was awesome. And, uh, and then with the blown exhaust, when you were lifting up the throttle, the, the throttle would stay fully open. Uh, they would just cut the, the fuel injection, but you would add air. And it was it was funny, blown diffuser was funny. It was, you would, on high speed, more you would lift up the throttle, less downforce you would have at the rear. Yeah. So you had to stick in to get the downforce. And it was... Um, yeah, more throttle, more downforce. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was quite something indycar Insane. is 20 30 years behind but we all have the same car and they're strong so the racing is actually what's so good awesome. about indycar i feel like there's n there's no racing product that's better in the world no there's not absolutely like not. there's not and you can never guess who's gonna win you can have an idea who's gonna be up there but you never you can never i, I guarantee you very little time people say this is gonna be the podium and it actually oh, is. Oh, it's so hard to say. Like you just, you can't. Big thing also, I feel like the strategy in IndyCar is a big thing. Oh yeah. Because there's a lot of rules that can really screw you. Absolutely. As we, as we knew, or as we found out in IMS Road Course this year. Yes. Like the slick tire go really well on the wet. So oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, Absolutely I don't amazing. know how I stopped the car because when I was leading the last what it was like eight laps, I was like, no, I don't want a box. But then I was like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna destroy the car. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, you can't pit unless you get a penalty, and it's like, well, I think we have to take the penalty because, and I think you did as well. I did as well yeah. because you got to a point where the visibility was a problem, and we were on slicks, and it was still working. No, but then it you're was... like, ah, and then whoom, whoom, and the car just, yeah. it's physical car, huh? Oh my god. That's, you know, that's, that's a big thing with the F1. The F1 is like butter, but the neck is bad. The neck is bad. Everything else in Formula 1 is easy. I used to have 200, 200 milliliters of drink in my Formula 1 car. So that's a glass of water, small glass. In the car, I've got 1.2 liter, which is a complete camera yeah. back and I drink it all. And in Formula 1, I would never finish it. IndyCar is brutal. But I love that. You finish it, you go for a good burger and a good beer. Yeah. And it's a good day. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Also, the weight, I feel like it's not as sensitive in IndyCar. We got a bit more room. Which yeah. Is nice, which is <laughs> Fluctuation. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so you're ready for my questions. I'm ready. Rapid okay, fire. you're the first one. Ooh. Is your bed made right now? Yes. Okay. What's your guilty pleasure? 
Mm, chocolate. Chocolate? Yeah. I've got plenty in there. Like a lava, lava cake. Yeah? Oh, oh yes. good boy. Okay, what's one of your nicknames but that we don't know? I feel like everybody... I call you Cabron, but yeah. that's one of them. I feel like one. everybody knows them. Potato. Potato? Uh, Felix yeah. says potato. Okay. Yeah. I like potato. And then uh, some guy in, uh, in the F1 test said peito. Peito? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. What item is worth spending money, more money on? So which one you, you don't mind spending money on? Oh, is it the house? What, is it the car? What I don't, oh, experiences. Experiences? Yes. That's like good trips and... Mm -hmm. They are expensive, but I think they give you the best memories you'll ever have. I love that answer. Yeah. If you could afford any car, which one would you drive? I kind of know the answer. <sighs> my client is going to hate me, but uh, man, my dream car is a LaFerrari. Oh, wow. I think it's the perfect balance of sexy, fast, just The only point is that you car. need to have a lot of Ferraris to have a Ferrari. No, and, and no, yes. <laughs> and, and also, like, it's kind of like buying a jet. Yes. The price range yes. is okay. it's the same. Uh, your celebrity crush. Ooh. If you're a girlfriend, you can use a joker. Uh, Market Robbie. You, you know Market Robbie? Yes. Wolf of Wall Street? Yes, yes, yes. That one. Okay. Phobia? For me, snakes. And there's a lot of them in Miami. Spiders. Spiders. They've got legs. It's less bad than a snake. I feel. I, I prefer snake. Oh yeah. Oh, you can come and clean, clean my. I'll make your clean. house. Yeah. You get snakes. Uh, I had one in the basement the other day in the kids' playroom. Big? I had one in the pool. No, the one in the basement was a. It was a baby one. It was tiny. Where's the mama? Oh. Where is the mama? <laughs> Our next question. <laughs> What's a rainy day activity? Uh, play Xbox. Yeah. The only game I play is uh, Call of Duty Black Ops One. Okay. I love playing that with my cousins. Good game, that one. How do you answer the phone? Hola. 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 Okay. What's your Where is your happy place? At home, At with home. my family. Yes. And what's your favorite word? I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I kept the tricky question for the end. Uh, I guess the word that I love hearing always is good news, because it always something good comes yeah. off of that. Yeah. True. Very true. My friend. Muchas gracias. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Yeah. That's my house on, house on wheel and you're always welcome. Oh, thanks.